Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Uncommon Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Antasia Maddox, and thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, well, welcome to Season 2, Episode 3. Um, so let's just go, go ahead and get into the check-in. So this week has been pretty good for me. Um, I've worked quite a bit, um, like I've mentioned before, just to catch up on things, so it's, it's been fine. But I've been working quite a bit, and a lot of things have been accomplished. So this week, I am able to announce to you guys that I created something. Yay! So I um, I told you guys during this time I was, or the last month when I wasn't um, around, I was just struggling with creativity, and I was asking and like praying for and trying to manifest like some ways um, to build some of my creativity again and things like that. So a couple of ideas came to me. Um, one of them was creating a calendar. So I love having calendars um, in my own place. Like I use them every day. Like I use them um, even to do like planner type things and stuff like that, just have in my kitchen, those kinds of things. So I was like, maybe I should create a calendar. So I did. So I created a calendar for, um, the the coming year and I was hoping that it would be a perfect like gift to give to people great to use when you're starting the new year and things like that and there um the calendar is full of so each month has a different affirmation or um just something like a, a mantra something that you can use every day and look at and it's themed after the podcast so each of them are like lemons and things like that and my humble opinion it is beautiful like I'm super super proud of it and I would say a lot of my pride in it is because I didn't know that I could do it I didn't know that that was um a skill that I had or something that I could figure out and learn how to do so I'm super super proud of it and um they're actually available so I made a large calendar it's like eight and a half by 11 and then I made a smaller one something you could like fit in your purse fit in like a pocket type of thing. I made a smaller one of that as well. And the two are a little bit different. The larger version has space for you to like write out a list, to do's and um, birthdays, all that kind of stuff. And the smaller one does have writing sections, but I didn't section them out exactly the same way as the larger one, because I figured, you know, with the larger one, you want to have more options. So there's writing space for each month, like you can write on the calendar itself in the, like the little boxes or in the space allowed because they're not actual boxes. But um, yeah, so I'm super proud of it. And they're right now they're available on Amazon, depending on how things go. If people are really interested, I would be totally willing to um, look figure out some different designs. So depending on how this goes, I, I have some ideas about what I would do moving forward, but I'm really excited about that. And the second thing that I um, created was a journal. So I talk to you guys a lot about journaling and um, having prompts and things like that. And I know that journals exist that have prompts, but the, the thing that I don't necessarily like about them as I was thinking about it is that a lot of times the prompt will be for a specific day what if that's not what I want to talk about? And I'm one of those people that, um, it's not that I need to follow the exact structure of what's given to me, because I can do my own thing. But sometimes I feel like I should, like, oh, I don't want to skip this day, because this could be a good question today, whatever. So I created a journal that has um, prompts, questions, those kinds of things. It's like over 40 of them at the beginning of the um, journal. So you get to skim through, okay, so this is something that I'm really feeling like talking about today. This is something that's been on my heart. Maybe this is something that has um, prompted another thought in me and let me write about that. So the beginning of the book, once you open it up, has the 40 prompts and then the rest of it is blank pages for you to write on every single day or however often you decide to journal. So um, that is also available and the journal itself is available in four different covers. So um, essentially the same journal, but I wanted to give people options. Some people want something that looks more like nature. Some people want something that's plain or maybe something that's um, a little more feminine looking or maybe one that's more masculine looking, whatever the whatever your preferences are. I created um, four different covers for that. And in the coming months, I'll create actually more of that one because I, I can see how that could be um, definitely something that's useful and needed. And I mean, like I said, I myself use journals literally probably every day, so, or most days. And um, they're really helpful and it's really awesome. And I'm, I'm actually super excited about it. And I hope that you guys um, are able to pick them up and tell me what you think and how you feel about it. And along with those items, I will also be creating a few other things, but I will definitely let you guys know that as time goes. But for now, um, the calendars are available. Actually, by the time you guys see this, the large one might not be available yet. Like you might be able to see that it's 
there, but it's not published. Um, but definitely within the week, you'll be able to purchase that if you are interested in having a larger version um, or if you're interested in having a smaller version, that's definitely available as well as all of the journals. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. And I am, I'm just happy that that came out of this time. Like I was saying, I was really just in my head and um, kind of in a rut, struggling with creativity and just being overwhelmed in general. So this is a, has been a wonderful outlet and also has opened my eyes to something that I really enjoy and I'm excited about. And I, I just had no idea that, that this is where my creativity could take me. And I'm also thinking about posting some other things. So again, that time, that month, even though it was stressful in so many ways for me, um, it was so beneficial. It was so beneficial to me, um, just centering myself, growing, expanding, learning something new, you know, so, so many beautiful, good things came out of that time. So anyway, enough about that part, but um, they are available and I hope you guys check them out. And if you have any questions about them, please feel free to let me know. And you, you by this time you see this, you'll see in other places. So I'm also going to be public posting them on social media and I'll probably do some type of promotion for them as well. But so yes, that happened this week. What else happened outside of that? Um, Oh, music, guys. I might, I'm, as you, if, if you listen every week, you know I don't have music every week, but I have music again this week. Um, a guy that I recently, I was in the last week or two, maybe three, I discovered uh, David Michael Wyatt. This man's voice is incredible. Like, so soothing and nice and like deep and rich it's just a beautiful he has a beautiful voice um and also if you ever if you decide to look on his instagram his instagram is beautiful as well like he has these videos of um him singing him and his uh group and just oh just amazing beautiful 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 things um I, it seems like he's a fairly new artist because i only saw like five songs so maybe he'll have an album coming out soon which i'll be super excited to get um but the song that i've been the most excited about is shine granted I, you cannot go wrong listening to this this man's music I, I think he's amazing so i'll definitely link him down below in case, in case you want to guys want to try listen to something new this week um david michael wyatt amazing 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 have nothing but good things to say about him so yeah that's that's been my week everything is going well um things are moving along and it's getting cooler outside guys all of these good things happening together is just really making my heart warm but i love like this end of the year like weather wise fall and winter are my favorite seasons hands down winter being first and fall being second so this has been also a great time because I've also I've been spending more time outside with Willow so she's I'm, and she's been happy too so we've been going um to parks more often and we actually even found a new park maybe I'll maybe I'll share that with you guys next week um a couple of pictures of the park that we went to that was new so it, it's just been it's been good so the weather has been cooler, which makes me so happy because <laughs> I feel it's more tolerable for me to be outside and to do things. So that's also been a great thing this week. So let's get into this current or off topic. Oh, yes, these thoughts. So this is something else I want to talk about. So there is a new moon. I don't know if you guys are into these kinds of things like energy in the world. And I believe everybody should be aware and knowledgeable and know what's going on, but it's a new moon. So this um, new energy often brings in an opportunity for you to start fresh, start new things, begin your manifesting. It's like a new cycle um, of energy and things like that, just in case people might be interested in knowing those kinds of things, please take a look at some stuff and um, see if it's something you would be interested in keeping track of and maybe even checking your own behavior patterns because we are all very in tune with like the earth and those energies and um, the way things come about, how we feel, right? Which can turn into how we produce and things like that. So the more aware we are of the earth's energy and its shifts and things like that, the better we can, um, accommodate things and make the appropriate changes that we need to in our life. So that's something that was uh, off topic. Maybe I'll post a few little um, new moon kind of things, just like a beginner's thing, just in case you guys want to see that or are interested in learning more about that stuff. So 
now that that part is out of the way, let's get into our questions. We have two questions this week. So the first one is, um, where can I go if I'm interested in finding some kink related supports to bring back to my partner? I'm nervous about um, exploring this part of my sexuality. And I'm also nervous that my partner won't be receptive. So first, let me, first, let me say, I don't think I've ever quite said this, but I don't, as you guys hear, I don't repeat anybody's names. I never really disclose that kind of stuff. I am a one woman team, of course, at this point. So nobody else sees these questions anyway. So no one knows who you are, um, aside from me. And um, just so you know that if in the future, if somebody else has questions like this, know that I'm not sharing it with anybody. It's just, it's just the two of us. And then I talk about it publicly, obviously here, here we are, but I would never like put your name out there or share your information and nobody else is seeing this stuff, nothing like that. Just in case, just so you guys know for privacy reasons that that is the case. But to the question, so this is such a good question. Thank you for sending this in. Um, I'm assuming this came after listening to the birds and the bees uh, episode, I would assume, I don't know. But I would say the first thing, as far as like kink supports is there are so many groups and like platforms, websites, but the largest one that I know of that um, seems to be um, the most popular in the kink community, that kind of thing is FetLife, F-E-T-L-I-F-E, -E, like FetLife. So, but I will say in going to this website, be, be prepared that um, it's, def it's a public forum. It's kind of, I've, I've described it as like Facebook, but for kink, like for BDSM type things. But with it being so open, so many people can join it. And it's just like this, um, it can be kind of random, right? And it can be intimidating if this is your first time looking or you don't know what you're looking for. So I would say maybe creating a profile there and look specifically at groups and events in your area. And the reason I say that is because um, those groups and that, that kind of stuff and make sure you read them, see who's in it because on this site, there are going to be a lot of people that are, I mean, if I'm being honest, are just looking for like sex or just looking to um, see what you post. And these people who claim to have these titles of like Dom or somebody that have, those, have all this experience, but in reality, that's not the case. So you have to be intentional about who you talk to, like where, um, where you're pulling your information from. So again, that life is a great place. Create the profile, look at, look for events in your area, look um, for people who have different groups that you would be interested in in your area. So there's tons of groups, kink for beginners or whatever your um, kink or interest is. If it's, we don't have to get into a whole list. You guys, I think it's the gist. But whatever your thing is, you can you can search for, hey, this is something I'm interested in. Let me see what groups pop up. And again, you, you get the groups for, from the whole site. So it's all around the world that um, you can have access to this. But as far as finding like support locally, I think that's a, a great way route to go. Um, not every area has a very um, robust, we'll say, <laughs> um offerings like it's just not the case in some areas obviously larger cities will have more access and maybe you can travel somewhere and again if you're just looking for conversation or questions and people are often very open to answering things but again I caution to be cautious about who you talk to um because some people have a facade and it's just not that way so I in my opinion some of the things to kind of look for just to kind of give this this caveat of things um, people who just jump straight off and telling you what you should and shouldn't do, usually a red flag. Um, people who um, don't have like actual pictures, you know, that, that could possibly, possibly, not always a guarantee of that, but could possibly be a red flag that they have this um, kind of suspicious thing happening. And some people put in their profiles because you can absolutely also read those. Um, we're putting our profiles, oh, I, I try to be discreet. I don't want people to know that I'm here because we also have to acknowledge that even though we're having this conversation and I'm very comfortable with talking about sex, kink, whatever the things are, um, it's still a very taboo thing, kind of bigger picture. So some people are just kind of uncomfortable with if somebody would notice them because like I said, this is a public thing. There isn't, we'll get to that part. But so looking at profiles, looking for people in your area or looking for people that have a common interest 
And then once you find people, these groups or whatever, you can even um, comment or talk to the people, private message them if you choose to, or you could post on the platforms if that's what you wanted to do as well. There's no uh, right or wrong to that. But um, finding these people and then after you do, messaging them, seeing what information you can get from them and just talking, just having a regular, hey, this is something I'm interested in. Your profile seems to be aligned with something that I would be curious about. Do you have any pointers or whatever? And people there are super usually really nice. And the community at large is really big on consent um, and having conversations and like doing that kind of stuff. So to be in a space where you can have that conversation is really nice. I could also recommend like if you're looking for like support as far as like friends, things like that, those groups, also, those pages also often have like a munch. Munch is kind of like a vanilla meetup, vanilla meaning like not kink related. So you meet up at a coffee shop with a group of people who are also into kink and y'all just hang out and you can just meet friends that way and you can ask them questions and just like have like a, a social circle. And I think munches at this point, because of COVID have kind of been online. so. Again, you have to think about what's in your area or if you're interested in something that's farther away, you have access to it. Because like I said, this is open a full open form to everyone. And I will also caution and say, I don't know how much you know about kink. I think that um, it's important not to rely solely on like porn and those things. Like I think, uh, uh, depending on where it comes from, right? I don't think, and, and this is something you'll probably learn, once you start looking into these things, they, porn and like that kind of stuff doesn't represent the kink community and stuff that happens well. Like it's just not an accurate representation. Kind of like Fifty Shades of Grey. That came out and everybody's like, oh, I want to do these things, but it's not, that's not exactly how things typically happen. Um, it's way more communication. It's way more consent-based type of thing uh, for the most part in healthy situations, right? Because you have to think about some of these things are very dangerous. While I think people can feel like it's sexy and alluring and all of this stuff, you also have to realize like if you're into um, being choked, whatever, yes, that can be exciting, but that can also be very, very dangerous. So a lot of times in the kink community with people who are really involved and like really intentional in care, th there is a lot of discussions around um, consent and things like that. With that being said, on the site because you have so much access to people, people will probably contact you. So be prepared for maybe getting some contacts and um, you can always just ignore people. You can block them and all that kind of stuff. Even if you decide to create a profile and you only want certain pictures shown to certain people, you can also set that setting. So there's, there, there are options if you, if you choose to go there and you're intimidated at first because you will see like in your, in feeds, like people doing all kinds of things. And if you're not, necessarily prepare for that just be open to the fact it's not a vanilla space right that people are acting in these ways and they post pictures they post videos um and these things could be jarring if you're not prepared for them so just be you know open-minded and if you don't like something you just scroll past it and it's not a big deal but those things are there and if people are messaging you like I said you can block them that's not an issue either you can control what you see and what you what people see of yours and they don't see and um, again, I would just recommend looking into those groups and that kind of stuff. So to the second part of this, and you're nervous about taking it to your partner because you don't know how they would respond. I think that the nervousness is normal, right? I think that it's, it's always nervous and, you know, different to bring something new up. But I would say maybe bringing in like baby steps of things, like maybe sitting down, hey, are you going to have this conversation? There's something I really want to talk about. Um, that I'm really curious about and interested in and kind of bringing it up that way, right? Like in a non-threatening, not that we have to do it today, but I'm curious about this thing and I want to do some research into it, right? And this is something that seems exciting to me and I think it would add to our intimacy and things like that. So I think maybe having that conversation and even bringing them in, I, and I don't know your dynamic, um, discuss that stuff, but I think that it's important to know that just because you are into something, doesn't mean somebody else will be, right? That's fair. And I think also second, but you have to give people a chance. You know, you have to give people a chance to um, understand that we have to realize also that even though people talk about these things more often, it's still a very taboo thing. People are like nervous and weird about it and <laughs> intimidated about the things they don't understand. So with that being the case, it's important to 
maybe take baby steps and even look into some things together. I don't know that it, it depends on what your current partner is into already, but I don't know that I would throw somebody right into that life necessarily. Like maybe if you find some other resources and, you know, I'll also link, there's going to be a lot of links this time, guys. Um, some, a couple of people that um that I know of that might be a good place to start. Like they even have like YouTube videos, um, podcasts, that kind of stuff. So maybe listening to some of those things without the visual could also be helpful. Like just starting just with that or just purely starting with like toys or something like that, you know, to kind of gradually get into actual people, right? I think the interacting with people can sometimes feel more intimidating than it just being you and just information and words, right? So maybe that could be a good way to go. But again, I think talking and just starting little baby steps. Hey, this is something I'm interested in. This is what I've been thinking about. Um, here are some resources. Let's look at this stuff together because I think we'll be fun and kind of just go from there and, and not have it be this pressure of like, this is what you have to do because I think that can be off-putting. But also on the reverse, it can be off-putting if you have someone who's interested in things and you shut them down immediately, right? And you're like, oh, this is weird. Oh, this is, you know, that doesn't create a safe space and doesn't make you feel vulnerable because- um, doing things in this in this world in this realm can be um, it, it can evoke a lot of emotion and feeling and things like that and it doesn't have to I'm not saying it always will but um, from my understanding of what I've heard and uh, what I know it can it can be intense so exciting but intense so it's, it's important to be prepared and to have those conversations before you just you know throw people in there so I would just bring it up um, do some research, see what you can find. Um, and if you find people on there, because there are so many great people there, honestly, um, and just talk to them. Hey, how did you do this? There's even groups on how to have those conversations, right? Hey, I'm new to this and I want to be able to talk to my partner and people can give you feedback and have that conversation. So yes, I hope that was helpful. I really hope that was helpful. And um, I'll link, I'll say this, I'll link what I can because I know the during that Birds and, Birds and the Bees um, podcast there were some things that were flagged I couldn't post so annoying but true right it's still the facts so I need to make sure it's actually something I can do but I'll I'll figure that part out so I hope that was helpful um the next question is um what if you want to leave a partner that has mental health issues you know this person has been struggling for a while but it's becoming um too much for you and your needs are not being met so I will say this I think that this is tricky and I can see why this is such a hard thing to do because you don't, I would imagine, right? Most people wouldn't want to make people feel like they're being left out in the cold and left alone. Um, but I think that we also have to think about our capacity, you know, and think about what's going on. While relationships won't always be perfect, right? They're, that's just not a reality. And they won't always be that you're always getting all of your needs met ever. Like that's just not, no one, no one person can fulfill all of your needs, just period. You, you just have to, you pick someone if it's somebody you want to be with or whatever your dynamic is. This sounds more of a monogamous situation from the other things. Just for, for, for this one, guys, I just pulled out the questions because there was some other things that um, they didn't want me to share. But anyway. Um, this is a monogamous relationship. So you, I think it's just important to understand or any other kind of dynamics. One person cannot fulfill all of your needs. That's just not going to be the reality. Things will not always be happy. There will be moments, especially with um, long-term relationships where things are not um, 100%, things like that. So with all that being said, I think that taking an account and a, a view of the entire relationship is important, right? Is it that the relationship itself is not fulfilling to you or is it in this moment? And I think sometimes when you're in the, in the midst of things, it can feel like it's just all a wash, right? All this entire thing is too much because you're overwhelmed and that's, and that's fair, right? But maybe asking for some space could be helpful. Like, Hey, I know you're having this, this time, but I also need to take care of myself. Maybe you can go reach out to whatever their other resources are, be it therapy, be it other friends, be it taking some inventory for themselves, right? But you don't have to be the crutch or the, the sole person responsible for someone else's mental health, right? Like even hearing that, that's not our responsibility. Our responsibility oftentimes is to support, to be there, to be 
um, a partner to be to participate in these things, but not to carry the burden for you. Um, I think that it's important to realize that and go into it with that space and not just because you're having this hard time, then I want to leave. Now, from what you said, that doesn't seem like the case, but if that is the case, then I think thinking about if that's the kind of relationship you want to be in, because it's, it's not, and I don't know how many people would agree with this, but there's nothing wrong with deciding you don't want to be in a certain type of relationship or in a certain kind of dynamic, be it whatever those things are, mental illness or whatever the case may be. If that is outside of your realm of like, this is what I can handle or I can learn to, to accommodate and try to figure out how we can work things together. There's nothing wrong with saying that's not the dynamic you want to be in. I think that sometimes people and media, whatever, will have us believe that if, we, if you love somebody, you just deal with everything. And you just try to accommodate and you just try to figure it out and you move things around because that's what good people do. Because good people make accommodations for what their partner needs. Now, to some degree, that is true, right? That is, that is absolutely true. We make accommodations for people. We um, try to fulfill their needs too, right? Because it's not just about us. But it's also important not to abandon your own needs in doing that, right? And, and I don't mean that in... I, I want to have white sheets. This other person wants to have black sheets. And now I have to give up white sheets. That's that's kind of trivial, right? And granted, it's some, some, maybe somebody cares a lot about that. But my point is, like, those are kind of um, superficial types of things. But what I'm talking about is what you need in a relationship. How do you feel loved? How do you feel connected? What is that looking like? I think that's a whole different kind of ball game. And, and I don't know if you're seeking therapy or that could be some things that you could work out, right? And figuring out what are my deal breakers? What are things that I can kind of maneuver around and deal with? But to the point of the mental health piece and that kind of stuff and wanting to leave it sounds like from what you said to me um in the other parts of this that this has been happening even before these spurts of the issues around mental health but you feel more um apprehensive about leaving after the the, the peaks are happening once the depression really sets in it's too much right so what i will say because this is such a challenging thing i understand not wanting to um abandon so to speak or leave or break up with someone in the midst of that um it does seem like there is some up and down of it which is also normal um in the moments where things aren't so crucial i would say having those conversations but so i'll say two things one while things are really bad figuring out how you can manage and support yourself because i mean at the end of the day that's what you you have to think about that what kind of support do you need what kind of um coping skills do you have okay this person is feeling all of this stuff i'm taking this on what can i do for myself that could be a great thing to, to talk about in therapy it could also be a great thing if you guys aren't doing that yet or if that's not something you're interested in having that conversation with each other like hey and this is obviously not in the midst of it being bad but when it when it's on a better note, um, having that conversation. Okay, so in these moments, this is how I'm feeling, right? I'm feeling overwhelmed by X, Y, and Z, and it would be really helpful if we could do whatever. What fill in the blanks of what you need, right? If it's you need space, if it's that when they feel super depressed, you don't um, you don't do certain things. Maybe you go out more often. Maybe you um, have a like a crisis plan. So when you are feeling this depressed, then these are things that you can do. And then I can go do these other things because maybe that will give you space to free up and do other things, right? And to take your space, regroup and come back when you need to. But in the midst of it being um, to a point where you feel like it's too much for you and too overwhelming, I, I say that it, it, it's safe to say, hey, are you, are you feeling safe? If they are not feeling safe, contact someone else because that's not for you either, right? If they're not feeling safe, if they don't feel like they can take care of themselves, contact someone else, police, whoever, um, some type of mental health supports that will, because I know everybody's not interested in calling police to get them escorted somewhere. So I understand that as well. But calling to have those supports for that person, if they're not feeling safe. If they are feeling safe and they're just in the moment and just feeling sad, that's when they need to tap into their own coping skills because that can't be that can't be your responsibility, right? It doesn't, that doesn't um serve them and it obviously is not serving you so in those moments hey these are some coping strategies that we came up with these are things that you can do i'm going to take a minute 
right? And do whatever the things are that are for you. Taking a walk, talking to somebody, journaling, um, playing a game, doing a puzzle, whatever it is that kind of centers you, whatever you you have decided is your coping strategy and doing those things and, and kind of moving through those rougher spots. Now, again, all of this sounds like this is stuff that needs to be set up before things go down into these dips, which I think is crucial because once you're in crisis mode, everything is crisis. Everything is crisis. So there is, there often isn't a lot, a lot of room um, to think logically. Our brains just don't necessarily work like that, right? We go into this um, fight or flight or sometimes people freeze, whatever the case may be. So in those moments, you, you, you you're not as capable of making those kinds of decisions and figuring things out. Granted, people make decisions when they're in crisis, but they're not often the um, most helpful, most beneficial. Um, so it's, it's important to do that when you're not in those moments. As far as leaving, again, you do not have to stay with anyone. And there's nothing to feel guilty about in saying this dynamic, this kind of relationship just does not work for me. You know, and if it's not something that you guys can work out, I think it's important to have that conversation and take care of yourself. You know, um, you are not responsible for keeping this person afloat. That's just not how really healthy relationships, in my opinion, should work, right? That it, there has to be some type of give and take. People say 50-50. I don't think relationships are ever 50-50. I, I just don't. I, um, especially not... Uh, in each individual thing, like you, someone does 50% of the cleaning, then I do this other 50. And it, I, I just don't think that it often works that way. But I think that you, it's important to um, find someone who can mesh well and complement the things that you need, right? That I think, in my opinion, that's what, that's what partnership is about. Finding someone who can complement those things, but not necessarily that we are doing exactly the same things 50% of the time and all that kind of stuff. That, Cause that's just not the reality, especially in dynamics like this where someone struggles um, with mental health issues and you do not, right? That that will ne you will never be able to necessarily be in the exact same space. But that doesn't mean that your, your emotional needs and the support that you need from a partnership should be ignored because this other person has other kinds of issues. That's not how that works, right? Your needs are just as valid. You also should feel loved and safe and taken care of and all of those things. So it's important to make sure that that stuff is happening. If it is not, again, having that conversation with your partner, hey, I'm not feeling supported in these areas, whatever the case may be, what can we do to fix it? After you get to this point, or maybe you don't even want to do that, right? Sometimes people just say, you know what, this doesn't work for me and I'm out of here. That's also fair. You know, I think people might disagree with me, but I'm telling you, hey, if it's not working for you, it's not working for you, right? And that's fine. So I think that first realizing that it's not your responsibility to take care of them. It's just not. It's, it's, it's not your responsibility to take care of them. Our job is to support. Our job is to be loving and caring and all of those things. But the core of that, that when you are in a rut, it's my job to hold that burden for you necessarily. I don't think that's true. Now, how you can be supportive and that kind of stuff, sure. Will there be moments where you're overwhelmed and exhausted by things? Sure, right? And I'm sure that it can be exhausting to deal with things. And we have to be, we have to acknowledge that, right? That some of the things that while we love someone and we want someone to love us, some of our characteristics, our flaws as whatever you want to call them, I just like to Say that they just add to who your personality and who you are, right? Some of those things, while we want people to love us for ourselves, can still be overwhelming for that other person. And I think this is a prime example of that, that 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 that, that dynamic can happen. But I don't think there's anything wrong with um, you walking away if you need to. If you've tried, you've done the things that you feel like you need to do in this, this partnership, it's totally fine to walk away. And if um, that person has questions for you, of course, be there to answer those questions and have that conversation, but it's not your job to take care of them. It's just, it's just not. And if the relationship isn't being reciprocated in any other ways, maybe not in this way, but your partner's not giving to you in other ways that make you feel loved and supported, then I think that's a cause for having that conversation and walk away if need and walking away if need be. If there's no ability to maneuver things, like I said, from what you said, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Um, so maybe doing that, maybe again, like running through a script of what you might want to say with someone else, writing down your questions and 
or your concerns or your thoughts before entering that conversation, because that can be anxiety provoking. Once you have someone in front of you, it can be nice to have something written. Okay, this is what I wanted to say. This is how I feel. Because having that interaction can come sometimes make you feel like, oh, maybe I don't, or you don't remember, right? Or you're like, oh, see, I can't say this thing, but if you write it down, it's easier to commit. Okay, so this is this is how I feel. Maybe even um, writing a letter and telling them, hey, I wrote this letter, but I also want to have a conversation with you about it. But there are options for you to do that if you want to do it in a kinder way and be be thoughtful. You know, not saying, not to say, oh, I'm leaving you because you have these mental health issues. That That's probably not the best way to do so. That can be very, very, very hurtful. Um, but just having a conversation, like, I understand that these are your needs and I just don't feel that I have the capacity to meet them, you know? Um, and I'm also not feeling that my needs are being met for these reasons, if you choose to go into that as well. Um, and just having that conversation. So that's the advice that I would have. So to talk to them, maybe seeking some other supports and you are not responsible for caring somebody. You're not responsible for taking care of them. And it's okay. It's okay that a relationship doesn't work for you right? You haven't done anything wrong. They haven't necessarily done anything, anything wrong either. You just have to find people that are the best fit, you know, the best fit for your needs and for theirs. And if you guys can't um, move things around and make things work, then it, it becomes unhealthy, which it sounds like it's starting to happen for you. So I hope that that helps. And I hope that um, you take care of yourself. And I hope that, that things that, that things work out for you. Honestly, I really do. Um, so thank you for those questions, guys. So if you guys have any questions, thoughts, any of the things, you can send them to uncommonquestions1 at gmail.com in our Facebook group or on Instagram. Or you can text me if you have my number. I'm totally open to that as well. Um, so thank you. So let me just get a drink of water. Guys, it's a lot to talk for this long and not have water. I'm going to be honest. So the question, the topic kind of goes into one of the questions that the question I just answered. Um, it's about, I, I think that we're in a space and a time in the world where people are trying to be more open and honest and which is, which is a beautiful thing, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. But it seems like there is some confusion around this ability to be open and communicate does not mean that you just automatically get what you want or that people will agree with you or things like that, right? So that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about, that having this open communication and expressing ourselves doesn't mean that one, you get the things that you want and that people won't always agree with you. Um, and especially in relationships, right? I think that people have this like, oh, see, we have this open communication, we can talk about anything. Yes, that's really beautiful. You should create a space where people feel safe and loved and and um, seen and taken care of, but having that openness does not mean that your partner will always agree or take things favorably. Honesty does not equate to someone being like, oh, and you're okay, so you're being honest with me. Great, that's awesome, right? We have to account for the fact that people still have emotions, people still have feelings, you still have to be tactful. And there is such a difference between <laughs> Um, this concept of honesty that's also beautiful and, and I totally support it and I, I think it's healthy and also thinking about what comes out of your mouth. Being open and saying like, yes, we can have all these conversations doesn't mean you can say or do anything. That's just not the truth, right? There's still boundaries. There's still um, some expectations seen sometimes and mentioned or not. And that those things come out in these conversations where it's important to think about things. Yes, you should be able to articulate however you're feeling, express yourself freely. I firmly believe in all of those things. I think it's healthy and important. But in doing so, you have to understand that the person receiving said information, one, doesn't have to be happy, right? They don't have to say, oh, I'm so grateful that you said all these things. Now I'm just going to go off and, and just smile about it because you were great. I appreciate you being honest with me, which could be a response, right? I appreciate you being honest with me, but this hurts, right? So that 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 level of being open and honest, I think the part that sometimes people miss and sometimes can cause chaos is the fact that you, one, have to think about what's coming out of your mouth. What is the context? How can I say this in a way where I'm saying the things that I need to say, but I'm also not causing all of this unnecessary 
um, chaos or hurt or whatever the case may be. Now, again, this is not to say that I think that pain and, you know, hurt feelings are avoidable because I don't think that that's the truth. Sometimes things just suck and they hurt your feelings and that's fine. But I think there are ways to go about saying something that doesn't have to be um, so harsh and so mean, very equivalent to kind of with the kink conversation. Not that this what this person said, but I just want to use this as, as an example because it came to my mind. If you're in a relationship with someone who is not doing something that you want them to do, and we don't even have to have it be about sex, right? It could be about anything. And you want them to wash dishes before you get home. If every day all you do is come in and say, oh, and the dishes aren't washed again. Okay. Yeah, they're not, right? Instead of communicating, hey, I would really appreciate it if you will wash dishes when I come in because when I come in, I'm, re I'm ready to cook dinner, yada, yada, whatever the thing is, right? And I think that is across the board with all kinds of communication. Hey, I'm not having this need met. Hey, I need more space. Hey, I need more quality time, whatever the case may be. In, in presenting these things, while the person receiving the information should be receptive and open, being receptive and open does not mean that it doesn't hurt my feelings. Right, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have an impact, and those are two different things. Yes, I will, someone could want to hear you. Yes, there could be a conversation. Yes, all of that stuff is true, but you have to understand that the the open piece of it and someone being receptive to you does not take away the fact that they're human, right? And that things can be hurtful. So you have to be you have to think about the things that you say. You have to think about the way you say them and things like that. Now that does take more energy. And some people just say, oh, I just want to be able to say whatever I want to say. Okay, well, I, I just don't know that that always works well. Because again, you have to think about the emotions involved. Someone loves and cares for you and all that kind of stuff. So it's important to think about the way you say things and the audience and the fact that this person might not necessarily be happy hearing these things and that that's okay, right? That the openness and communication in the back and forth does is not like this, um, this pill or this cure-all. Honestly, I think in a lot of situations that I've seen more than not, sometimes that, that communication can cause what can feel like more conflict in the beginning, right? It can feel kind of gross to have this friction, even though that friction is healthy. That friction is helping you get to where you need to go so that both people are having their needs met so that everybody is feeling heard and seen. That it's important to do so, but that doesn't mean that it always um, feels like, oh, and that was just great to hear. Now we can go hold hands and everything's awesome. Because it, But that reaction also doesn't mean that you've done something wrong, which is another point to that. That in this communication, even if someone is not pleased by what you said, is not happy with um, hearing whatever it is, it's still really important and um, necessary for your health and for somebody else's to have that communication and to have that um, openness because it, it, it builds the relationship, it builds trust, it builds connection, it builds intimacy, right? Being able to be vulnerable in that way is so critical, it's so critical. And from all of the experts out there that, that do these uh, relationships and connection kind of things. Um, I, from what I hear, they say the same things. From what I see in my own personal life or with other people, that is the that is the key. The communication piece and feeling and heard and seen from by someone is super important. So it only happens through communication. But I think that the what I keep hearing is that or people seem so disappointed when somebody's like, oh, but they got upset or they their feelings were hurt. So why should I say anything? It was like. The point of the communication is not to necessarily, right, and it depends on what the communication is, not to necessarily avoid someone having hurt feelings in this moment, but it's, it's to get to a resolution, it's to get needs met, it's to, to be understood, it's to be heard, all of those kinds of things, and that's a different um, type of expectation, we can say. Um, so I, I think going into it with that understanding that this person can have their own reaction, and that's okay, too. Right, they don't have to respond favor favorably in this moment. And you can also in that moment give them time. Hey, I'm sure this was a lot to hear. Do you need to take some space? Right? Asking people what they need in these moments, asking people and communicating. And I, I err on the side. I think sometimes people should probably over communicate. Um, I am a person that is also, I'll be honest, work trying to work on that myself, um, acknowledging what I need in the moment, 
communicating those things, that kind of stuff. So it, it takes more work, but I think that your relationships are more fulfilling and full if you do so. So another part of this is I think the advocating for what you need, which is speaks right to what I was just saying, that sometimes it can be hard in the communication piece to know, first of all, what you need and then to advocate for it. So in my opinion, it's important to have relationships where you can do that if you can't have open communication with somebody I just don't think those relationships um, work well I think people lie a lot and sneak around and do all kinds of things to um, fill in the gaps to to because of the things that they're not getting or you know they go talk to whoever about a thing they should be talking to their partner about it just creates a lot of chaos but a lot of that is on that person you know like if you if I if I have all of these needs and I'm saying oh I can't go talk to such and such that's not on them that's on me because at, at the end of the day I need to advocate for myself one and two I decide who I'm in a relationship with if I'm in a relationship with someone who I cannot talk to, who I can't um, share things with, who I can't be vulnerable with, that's a whole different kind of issue. All of it stems to me because I get to decide. I say, hey, this is something that I need. I need to bring this thing to my person. And if my person is not receptive to my needs, then I need to think about why am I with someone who can't be receptive to my needs, right? Have that conversation. Hey, I'm trying to talk to you and X, Y, and Z. If they don't respond favorably, you have to think about that stuff. And I understand that people will, oh, kids and this and this. Can I, we haven't had an episode about this. Can I, can y'all please, you know what? Can people please stop? <laughs> Let me, th just please stop saying in relationships for kids. You are oftentimes, you are damaging your kids, period. It, it, it's, it's not healthy for your kids to be in unhealthy, see unhealthy relationships all the time it's just not it's net i whoo i rarely err on never i have never seen unhealthy relationships where people stay together because of the kids and it benefits the kids i i just haven't maybe monetarily if, I, if you're just worried about finances maybe maybe but i will always take mental health over money always I will always take stability and emotional safety over money. I, we are wired that way, I believe, for the most part. It, it's not because it's not about the money. It's about if I feel safe with you. And that safety, while sure, I think money does create a certain um, type of relationship within us and that kind of stuff. Sure, not, not taking away from that at all. But our emotional safety trumps that stuff. It just, it just does, right? So the idea that people stay for kids and don't have these communications for kids, it drives me nuts because it, it just never serves the kids, right? It just, it just doesn't. So just be honest about what this is really about, right? Because I think that then you can really get to a point where you can work things, you can figure stuff out because you're not making it about something that it's not. You know, people want to force all these things on children and like, no, you need to provide a safe and healthy uh, environment for them. Anyway, that was an aside. So I think sometimes people stay in relationships and um, for lots of different reasons, right? For, for lots and lots of reasons. And I'm not trying to be um, uh, trivial about that because I understand there's a lot of different reasons. But we have to, if, if the goal is to have healthy relationships that support us and those kinds of things, we have to think about so what am I getting from this? Why am I staying in relationships that aren't healthy for me, right? Because again, oftentimes people are, oh, well, you know, they don't listen. They don't do this, they, 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 they. But if you are acknowledging that and you are staying, then who's, who is this on? You or them. Who is responsible for you? You, typically, right? So if that's the case, then we have to make those decisions, advocate for ourselves and do the things that we need to do. And if you need some extra support with, leaving or whatever you decide to do, whatever the, the, the solution is, it, it's, it's your responsibility to take care of yourself. As an adult, that's what we do, right? We take care of our own needs. We make sure our needs are being met. And again, this person might be fulfilling other needs, but you have to kind of make the, the conscious decision to figure out which one is most important. If you are trying to make the decision to say, hey, my emotional support is most important, then you have to kind of do have actions that reflect that. 
and not put that on someone else and make make that somebody else's problem because it's it's essentially not you decide to stay so that's another thing um I covered that so I'm looking at my notes looking at my notes I yeah I wrote this one in I think that it's important, kind of to what I was just saying. We're just we are responsible for our own journeys. You know, we are responsible for um, our own lives and our own stuff and understanding our stuff, which is another reason why I advocate for therapy. Not because therapy goes in and fixes all of this stuff, and now you're this brand new person. Even though to some degree you kind of are, but what it really does is bring awareness. Right? We have to be aware of our stuff. We have to be aware because we can't expect people to just come in and do all of these things, show up in these ways and, and just expect that everything is just always going to be rainbows. And if they're not, then this person must not be for me. Understand that sometimes your attitude is annoying. If you, if you're, if you are a person who gets upset really quickly and all of these things, sometimes that can rub somebody the wrong way. That does not mean that person doesn't love you. That doesn't mean that your relationship might not be healthy, any of those things, right? But again, we are very human people. So sometimes that stuff can be annoying, but that's okay, right? In a certain kind of situation, depending on what it is, caveat, caveat, caveat. But the point is that these things do happen, but we have to have some certain, a certain level of self-awareness to realize that, okay, these are moments where I can be um, a little overbearing, whatever. Maybe this person will be, think it's absolutely fine. And, and so my point is not to say that you'll have to find these people who um, perfectly fit into all of the stuff that, and they love every single piece about you, right? Because to some degree, I think that can happen. But I think realistically, just, just by pure nature and us being individual people, that sometimes things are irritating to each other, right? Sometimes somebody might, again, something very small. Like we're talking about like dishes. You put the spoon in this way, but the other person wants you to put the spoon in the other way. These are things that are annoying and different, but we can kind of manage. Or, but if it's something bigger, like during... PMS related type things, right? Um, sometimes you can have super, really intense PMS symptoms, extreme mood swings, all of these kinds of things. Your partner might not be so thrilled about these mood swings, but they could manage and deal with them. My, my point is for us to be aware so that we can communicate our needs and our stuff to other people, right? And that, and understanding that those people might be like, oh, this is kind of troubling but if this is what comes with the package then okay we kind of deal and move forward so I think that my bigger point of this whole section is that one the communication piece is super important but the second part of that is that we have to be sure first of all of who we are I, I believe at least to some degree and who we are and stand in that and really be able to advocate for that stuff and be able to have those conversations with people and, and having those conversations be prepared to talk right? Sometimes that conversation, sometimes that back and forth is not like, oh yes, I agree with everything you said. Sometimes it's like, no, I, I'm not sure. But can we talk about this other thing and compromise and figure it out? Like that is all a part of this. That is all a part of creating this space where we are safe, where we are um, vulnerable, where we are loved well. In order to do that, you have to be vulnerable with people. You have to let people into the things that are might, might not be the most favorable, right? And you have to have tough conversations. That is relationships across the board, not just romantic ones, that there has to be some level of capacity to do that. And I think in the healthiest situations, if you are prioritizing mental health and connection in the healthiest situations, sometimes those, you're going to have moments where it's not pleasurable, but that doesn't mean that it's not healthy. And that doesn't mean that it's not um, doing what it should when you are presenting things that are different or like a friction to how you feel, it can feel jarring to your system, right? Because it's different. Like, what are you talking about? No, right? But I think going through and having those conversations gets you to these places where you have more healthy and beautiful relationships, but just don't go into it because I think that's a, a misconception. And I think sometimes people go into it expecting like, oh, but I told her this stuff and she got upset, so I can't say anything else. That the emotion of being upset or disappointed or hurt or whatever should not negate the fact that this person needs this information. That's, it's okay. 
it's normal, it happens. Let's figure out the emotion and move forward. You know, but I think sometimes we get so stuck in, oh, but you got upset. Okay, and that's fine if the person is upset or their feelings are hurt and they communicated that to you, that's, that's fair. But what do we do moving forward? You know, and I think being able to manage that stuff is really important. And just being able to advocate for yourself. You know, I think we talk about advocating for other people and doing these things for other people, but I, I think we also need to be able to do that for ourselves. Because yes, we should love and support other people and take care of them and do all that stuff. But are we also pouring that into ourselves and being kind and being thoughtful with our own um, needs and being mindful of our own stuff and how that can rub somebody else the wrong way? And that's okay too, right? So um, yeah, that's what I have this week. And I hope this conversation was helpful. And um, if you guys have any thoughts, questions, any of the things, please send them to uncommonquestions1 at gmail.com. And like I said, I will link all of the things, the calendar, the um, resources that I, that I mentioned. Um, I will link all of those stuff in the description box. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.